I wonder if there's anyone here who likes bananas. Okay, can I just say, so you know I don't have one with me, because I've got to say that I really, really, bananas and I just don't get on. Okay, can't stand them. In fact, an act of sacrificial parenting for me was when I used to mash them up and feed my children them. Horrible. Anyway, imagine I had a banana. Do you see the banana I've got in my hand? See it? It's an imaginary banana. Okay, so you've got to imagine it. Okay. Now, imagine if I was saying to you that this banana, look at it, it's lovely and yellow and it's ripe and it's ready to eat. And I said to you, do you want a bit of a banana? What do you think you might say? You might say, okay. And if I said to you, I'll tell you what, I'll go 50-50 with you. What does that mean? You get half a banana. So imagine if, as I'm sharing my banana, I begin to peel it. I peeled off the banana. And I hand you the skin. And I proceed to munch on my banana. How might you feel? You might sort of find yourself going, that's not quite how I imagined this. I I wasn't quite imagining that you would end up with the bit that you can eat and I can end up with this bit that I can't really do anything with. It wouldn't really be me sharing my banana, would it? When it comes to sharing, sometimes we need to realize that we're not always very good at it. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been sharing something with someone and the person says, can I have the bigger half? Which actually tells you a lot about the mathematical mindset of most people nowadays. How can you have a bigger half? If you have a bigger half, that sounds like three quarters. But that's one of the challenges that we have in our society, is there's a sense in which sometimes we want to pretend that we're sharing by giving the waste Or sometimes we're guilty of, well, I know that I should share, but could I just have the bigger portion, please? And that is a challenge. It's a challenge for all of us, and we're going to be thinking about that in a few moments as we turn to to God's Word, and we read a story about the feeding of the the 5,000, where Jesus challenges us to think about sharing. So harvest is a time when we have got to think about how we give of ourselves. So the next time you're having a banana, I will never have a banana. I don't like bananas. When you're peeling off the skin, remember the challenge to share. We're reading from Mark chapter 6, beginning at verse 30. Jesus feeds the 5,000. The apostles gathered round Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, you give them something to eat. They said to him, that would take eight months of a man's wages. 
Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have, he asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of the men who had eaten was five thousand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. In that passage, there are three lessons that I think we can learn. The first is this. They need to identify that there is a bit of a problem. Verse 35 to 36 says this, By this time it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. There is this large crowd that has gathered to listen to Jesus and they are attentive to his teaching. They're hungry for what he has to say. There's a sense that these people are having their spiritual needs met. But there's a practical problem. They don't have food. Maybe the disciples had picked this up because there were some restless children. I don't know what it's like with your families, but generally speaking, that you know that it's around about mealtimes with children because they generally ask. Or maybe it is that there's a sense in which the disciples are starting to have a little twinge because at the beginning of our reading, we're told that actually... They hadn't even had time to eat. So maybe they were starting to go, ooh, I don't know about you, but I'm a bit peckish. I'm a bit hungry. Whatever it is, there's that moment when the rumbling tummies leads them to say to Jesus, maybe we should just draw this to an end and we can send the people home. Send them to go and get some food for themselves. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear about this group of people who have gathered to uh, listen to Jesus, I think, well, actually, poor planning. I don't know about you, but I would have thought that if uh, any of these people had been scouts, they would have been prepared. You would imagine that the men and the women and the children who were there, well, they would have thought about the fact that they might be out for a while and, well, surely to goodness, they should have thought ahead and planned a picnic. They should have put together a couple of sandwiches, a wee drink, and that would have got them through the rest of the day. So actually, when it comes to their hunger, they're responsible. Because surely, surely they shouldn't have left without any food. Their fault. Or of course, we could maybe say, well, it was poor planning on behalf of Jesus. I mean, Jesus, there's a whole variety of places that you could have picked to teach these people. You could have picked a place with a local co-op, or a drive through McDonald's, or a convenient place to be able to get them to go and get some food, why on earth would you choose a remote place to gather a crowd, Jesus? That's not very sensible. That's not very wise. When we hear stories about people who are facing hunger today, when we think about the reality of 1,300 food banks providing 2.5 million emergency three-day food packages in a year, 
there is a great temptation to blame. To blame those people who are accessing this support because, well, clearly they haven't planned ahead. Clearly they haven't saved. Clearly they can't cook because everybody can cook on a budget. And we make a whole series of thoughts or accusations, so often just in our head about those who we read about and hear of who are in need of help when it comes to food hunger today. Today is harvest and the first lesson we perhaps need to learn is not to respond by trying to apportion blame. Not to think that somehow people should be doing something different. But we just need to acknowledge the reality. The reality that sadly in our country today, there will be children who may not have a particularly healthy diet. There may well be children today who maybe only get to eat once. I can remember not long after um, the an oil crisis, the last oil dip, um, I was speaking to uh, the food bank up in Aberdeen. Um, and I was having a conversation with them about what was happening. And they said it has been truly amazing to witness people who had previously been highly, prof- prof- highly professional people who had big houses and big mortgages and nice cars and healthy car loans and three children some of them may be using private provision, coming through the doors of the food bank because they were using everything they had to keep the roof on the head, over their heads, to pay for their car, to make sure that their children could still go to school and all of those things. And that led these individuals to having to access emergency food parcels. It's not your stereotype of who might be using a food bank, is it? But that's the reality. So there's a problem. So then the question is, well, how are we going to solve this? I don't know about you, but when there's a problem, I always look to try and make sure that somebody else is solving it. It's much easier. Okay? I can just go, "Mm, it's a problem. Hey-ho, that's life. So the disciples go to Jesus and they say, there's a problem, there's hungry people, Go tell them to go, over, go back and pick up stuff, etc., etc., etc. And Jesus looks at his disciples and says, uh, verse 37, you give them something to eat. You give them something to eat. Jesus says to his disciples, you have some responsibility. You are the ones who I'm going to ask to to try and bring about an answer to this problem. And so very quickly the disciples scan around, do a head count and they go, whoa, this is going to cost a fortune. It's going to cost eight months pay just to provide bread. Some commentators suggest that it might have been that actually the one of the disciples, probably Judas, had a quick look in his wallet Counted out how much the money they had and they probably thought, Jings, that's all the money that we've got and it'll be gone. And they'll have just had bread. Are we really to spend all of that? Really? Jesus gives the responsibility to the disciples. It seems throughout scripture that God gives responsibility to his people for the feeding of the hungry. Isaiah 58 
Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them? Proverbs 22 verse 9, the generous will themselves be blessed for they share their food with the poor. And in Matthew 25, a reminder of the fact that I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. And then on it goes and it says, but when did we see you hungry and feed you? And Jesus said, whatever you did for one of my brothers or sisters, no matter how unimportant they seem to be, you did for me. Again and again and again and again throughout scripture, that responsibility is placed upon God's people. So we have a responsibility. There's a problem. God gives us a responsibility. And the third thing is, to respond in faith. If we read that passage in John's Gospel, we'd be told about how it was a young boy who brought along his uh, fish and his loaves. He's five loaves, he's two fish. And um, I love the fact that he was quite clearly the first Boy Scout because he came prepared. But I also love the fact That here is the story of someone who has so little but is willing to make a generous and sacrificial offering for others. This person didn't know how this was going to work out. He just looked and went, well, I need to share what I've got. I need to share what I've got. And so there's that sense in which this gift of five loaves and two fish is brought forward. That's it. A crowd of at least, well, 5,000 men plus everybody else. This seems futile. It seems pointless. It seems as if it can't even touch. And yet we're told that Jesus takes this gift offered generously and sacrificially and uses it to feed the multitude. That boy's faith, that boy's willingness to give generously and sacrificially led to others receiving. And so it is that I would suggest that for those of us who are followers of Christ, the call is for us to be generous and sacrificial, to give what we can. And it might not be a lot, It may be a lot, but it might not be. But what we can give and the attitude in which we can give it is what God can take and use so that others are able to receive. Hunger is a reality in our village, in our region. There are many reasons why there are those who do not have enough. Our responsibility is not to apportion blame. Our responsibility is to respond to that need. So today at Harvest we have given and what we have given is going to Cath. And in a lovely little sort of circle, Cath is one of the places where I provide chaplaincy um, through Workplace Chaplaincy Scotland, and we've just started that in the last four weeks. Going back to the banana. Let's not just throw people the skin. Let's share the good things that God has given us. Amen.